Oh, baby, a triple! Oh, can you believe it? Your eyes do not deceive you. What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Sweaty Cube, here back at it once again. Today's video is oh so special. We have with us in the garage a Daytona 765 Moto 2 Limited Edition bike. As many of you know in the pantheon of Yamanube fans, I am a die-hard Triumph simp, but I'm an extra die-hard Daytona simp. This is my favorite motorcycle in the world. It's my favorite platform of any sport bike that I've ever ridden. I've owned three of them. I have a race bike currently that's prepped for CMRA, and this is a very special version of the Daytona. So, why do I even have this motorcycle? Well, this motorcycle was actually given to me by Eurocycle Sports. They've given me this bike for about two months to play with it, to have fun with it, to go on track with it, to ride it, review it, and to do whatever I want with it. I don't know if they actually said that, but that's what I heard on my phone call with Chris, the guy over at Eurocycle Sports. Pretty sure he told me I could do whatever I want. So I'm gonna do whatever I want with this motorcycle because why wouldn't you, right? But before we even get started with specs, with all that kind of stuff about this bike, uh, differences that I've noticed over my race bike, um, I just have to impart on you how unbelievably gorgeous and just the attention to detail on this motorcycle is crazy. I've seen lots of photos of it, I've seen videos of this bike, but seeing it in person really is the cherry on top for me. Um, seeing this one piece molded carbon fiber here for the front fairing, for the rear tail, it's adorned everywhere. This front carbon fiber fender is actually the same as my 675R, so not a huge difference there, but um, just seeing this whole carbon fiber front here, the triple clamp up here at the top, that anodized aluminum thing, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure it's aluminum, it's all cut and cast, the special edition logo on there. And the fact that when you turn it on, it says Moto2 on the TFT display, the gold from the Olins, the little blue caps, it's incredible in person. Um, seeing the fairings and seeing the frame and everything, it truly is a very, very special bike. Um, Triumph only made 765 uh, for the North American market and then another 765 for the European and I guess the rest of the world market. So I think there's only 1340 of these. Is my math correct? No, that's not right. 1370, I don't know, I'll put up the number right here, but there's literally not that many of these motorcycles out in the world. It's a very limited edition bike. And honestly, I never thought that I would even see one in person, let alone get to ride one and review one and use one for even a small amount of time that I'm gonna have with it. Um, as many of you know, I have a 675R that is prepped for racing. I'm gonna pull it out here for this shot uh, in a little bit and we can look at the differences between these two bikes because they are still very close, but there are some very key differences to the 765 over the 675R that make it truly special. So first of all, the first big difference, as many people know, is that 765cc engine. So it's derived from the Moto2 power plant that Triumph uses for the Moto2 race series for Grand Prix racing. Uh, for around the world. Uh, Triumph is the official engine supplier for that series and so all the bikes on the grid for Moto2 actually have the same engine and it's a 765cc mill provided by Triumph. Um, this 765cc engine is very close to that Moto2 engine. It's not the same, obviously. It doesn't make as much power. It's not as racy, but uh, with some of the features that it has inside of it, it truly stands above head and shoulders the Triumph Street Triple RS, which is the same 765 engine that's top trim on the Street Triple. Had to take a couple notes here because the bike does feature a lot of stuff. So the engine itself has titanium inlet valves, stronger pistons, revised cam profiles, new intake trumpets, modified crank and con rods, intake ports and barrels, and an increased compression ratio. So you're looking at 128 horsepower and about 59 foot-pounds of torque for this motorcycle. And it makes all that power about 13,250 RPM. That's about the limit right there. Um, I just took this thing out for a quick ride around town through the hills and stuff, and I'm gonna have my first ride and review video coming out later. Um, but suffice it to say, the shorter rev limiter on this bike versus the 675R is a little weird. Um, and I have a lot to say about that, but I'll save that for the first ride and review. But the important thing to know about this bike is, even though it only has only 128 horsepower and 59 foot-pounds of torque, it is so much more than just the, the peak numbers and the specs and all that. It's the sum of the parts. Um, I think of something like the Honda RC30 or even the Honda RC213VS. 
that people were floored at how much those bikes cost. It was these crazy race replicas that Honda made, um, even something like the NSR as well. Um, those bikes, despite having performance chops that were about the same as leader bikes of the day, of top trim bikes of the time, they were so much beyond what the, the specs would suggest. It's the combination of all the parts working together that elevates this motorcycle to a place that few other bikes can touch, in my opinion. Um, so let's go over some of the key specifications on this bike. It features an Olin's NIX30 front fork. This is one of the, literally the best front forks you can buy uh, beyond going to some top shelf race component. Um, it has a TTX at the rear as well. So you're looking at Olin's front and rear. Not many motorcycles do that, guys. Like even top trim bikes will do an Olin's TTX and some sort of Showa front forks. I'm thinking about something like the R1 has the KYBs. Those are really nice, but Olin's, Everyone knows that's the gold standard for suspension, and it really shows. Um, it's an unbelievable suspension package on this bike, and I can't wait to see what it's like on track. Very similar to my race bike, but these are the newest and latest editions and very fresh uh, versions of the suspension. The other thing I really want to talk about this bike are the brakes. Um, this bike comes with the latest generation of the Brembo Stylema calipers and a, this uh, MCS master cylinder. That's a huge upgrade over the original 675R and you can feel it right away when you go off and ride on this thing. The feel through the lever for a stock motorcycle from the factory is incredible. Um, the only brake feel that I've ever felt that is close to this setup is our Ninja 400 endurance bike that has a Brembo RCS 19 uh, master cylinder. So literally one of the best braking setups you can have on this bike it is incredibly good. Um, the other thing as well is it features five different riding modes uh, borrowed from the Street Triple RS. And because we spent a lot of time with the Street Triple for our giveaway bike, I'm actually really familiar with both this TFT setup, the joysticks over here, and the throttle feel. Uh, when you start this bike up, it, it feels a lot like a street triple, which is kind of weird because you want it to be special and like a Daytona. It's not supposed to be a street triple, it's a Daytona, but this actually is very, very, very close to the street triple now, as opposed to back in the day where the Daytona felt completely different from the street triple. Um, and that's due to the fact that even though uh, this bike has that 765cc engine, that same characterful engine from the Street Triple, it's tuned a little bit more, but where you really notice the difference is the torque in the mid-range. Over the Street Triple, over the Daytona 675R, this bike has absolute gobs of torque in the mid-range. I'm talking that 4,000, 8,000 RPM spot, it really hauls, it pulls super nice. Um, and that makes it a really nice street bike as well. I've actually not ridden a Daytona on the street since like 2017. It's been a long time since I've ridden a Daytona on the street. My Daytona that I have um, is literally just a race bike. I never take it on the street. It's not registered for the road. It wouldn't even, it couldn't even be inspected for the road. It's missing all kinds of stuff. But this motorcycle, because it has headlights, because it has that juicy mid range, um, it works super well as a street bike. Of course, the ergonomics are very, very committed, but actually it works really, really well. The other thing I wanted to point out as well that is a huge feature on this bike is the bi-directional quick shifter and traction control combination. Um, that to me elevates this motorcycle way beyond the 675R. That's something that was sorely missing on the 675R, and that was just due to the time that it came out. You know, that motorcycle came out in 2013. Uh, having a quick shifter up was a really cool feature on that bike, but nowadays, all the top trim super bikes and all the top trim sport bikes have a quick shifter up and down, and this bike is all the better for it. You literally feel like such a hero when you're breaking in the corners and just banging down the gears. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, you know, but I miss downshifting myself. And, and I do too, I think it's really nice to be able to blip those downshifts really, really expertly. But if you're chasing lap times, which is what this thing is designed to do, you will go so much faster having an auto blip downshifter. Um, you can focus 100% of your energy on your brake zones, how much brake pressure you're having, and just slam down those gears and not even worry about it. So. I bet you when I get this thing on track after a good three or four sessions with it, I'm probably gonna be running my personal record pace at ECR, if not a little bit faster, because of that auto blip downshift setup. 
Um, it's incredibly important for riding very, very fast laps and an erase application, which this thing is kind of designed to do. Would I race this motorcycle? No, it's way too pretty to be raced in my opinion. And you have to be a madman to take this thing out and modify it to be a race bike. Um, it is way too pretty to do that. The other thing I wanted to point out as well is the gas tank and the main chassis and frame is the same as the 675. And this is a bit of a disappointment, I think, for a lot of people that the frame uh, for this bike, the new Street Triples, have all basically been the Daytona's frame since 2013. But here's my take on it. I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's a fan fantastic frame and chassis. It, it's so, so good. Um, the way this thing flicks into corners, the way it holds a line, again, adding all those components together, the Pirelli Super Courses here, the Olin's NIX forks, this frame, it just, the way this thing flicks in is like nothing else you will ever ride except for like a true thoroughbred race bike. Um, I've ridden lots of bikes, guys. I've ridden R1, ZX10, S1000RRs, uh, RC8Rs, my race bike, a ZX6. I've ridden so many different bikes on track and actually felt the way things flick in. And th this bike is so special. Um, it's, it's so, so special, the way that it just flicks into corners. Um, it's incredible. And it's just, it's a gorgeous thing to look at. I mean, this bike is just absolutely dripping with style, prestige, uniqueness and a special character to it. And if you're looking for that kind of experience, if you want a motorcycle that exudes prestige and exudes exclusivity, man, this is a really good option. These bikes are super cool. I'm pretty sure they're all sold out at this point, but maybe you can get one secondhand. Maybe you can go to Euro Cycle Sports and they're selling one. Maybe they're selling this one, I don't know. But um, if you are in the market for that sort of motorcycle, this should be at the absolute top of your list. Um, the only th other things that come close to it, I think, in terms of its prestige and exclusivity are maybe something like the R1M, but even then, they make a lot of those. Uh, maybe the HP4 from BMW, that was a really amazing and unique motorcycle that um, I certainly have no business riding anywhere around town or uh, on a racetrack, I don't have enough talent. But let's see, what else? One thing I wanted to mention as well is this motorcycle, despite being super top end, and you can probably notice this, does not have active or semi-active suspension. And you're probably wondering, oh, well, wait a minute, Yami, all the new BMWs and Aprilias and R1Ms, they all have semi-active suspension. I see the little wires sticking out of the forks and that's, that's like super race bike stuff, right? Take a look at all the GP bikes. Do you see any active suspension? Do you see any electronic suspension? You go to your local races, CMRA races, do you see active suspension and this and that? The answer is no, because honestly, a traditional fork setup for race applications is actually better than a semi-active and electronic suspension. Now, you might say, but how can that be? I want my suspension to adjust to me when I'm riding it and this and that. But really, having a more simplistic setup like this and dialing it to your exact tastes and preferences, while it is a little bit more difficult to do than having active suspension, um, actually yields a much better result and a much more compliant suspension. I personally way prefer traditional forks like this over active or semi-active suspension. Um, I, I think it just works phenomenally well. So now I will wheel in my race bike and we can kind of look at these two motorcycles side by side because, well, that just sounds like fun, so let's do it. All right, guys, just for posterity and to indulge myself, I have here my 675R CMRA prepped race bike. Then I've got over here the 765 Daytona. I'll layer in some B-roll over here as I talk about this stuff and what I'm seeing that's different or the same. So similar suspension setup, right? You got the Olin's front, Olin's front, Olin's rear, Olin's rear. This is, I think, the new version of the TTX as opposed to this older unit over here. It still works super similar. Uh, you can see the gas tank shapes are basically the same. Uh, not seeing any big differences there. You can definitely tell on the triple tree up here, that uh, bracket right there, just uh, the, the 765 is just so different and so unique. Um, master cylinder as well, you can see a big difference there between the two bikes. Um, you can see here as well, the frame is exactly the same. You can see the same exact frame from the 675R race bike to the 765 Moto2 edition. Even the rear sets are the same as well. Um, they're powder coated a little bit differently, but they're still exactly the same. Uh, you can still see the same exact, uh, for some reason, I don't know why Triumph does this, but they set up the shifter uh, assembly through the frame here. 
Uh, it's incredibly annoying because if you want to go GP shift with your bike, you have to get a whole new rear set. You have to get a whole new thing, which I haven't done on my race bike because I'm too lazy and it's like, $500 for something that is just gonna modify it a little bit, even though I really do like GP shift. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can tell that these two bikes obviously share a lot of the same stuff. The engine is completely different in this one, and so is the TFT and the rider modes and all that and the braking. Um, and I think that because it has the different TFT, it has the quick shifter up and down, the throttle feel is different and the brake is different. Um, even though they ride exactly the same, basically, um, those key changes make this feel like a completely different motorcycle over this uh, 675R. Um, they actually do not feel super similar, but this one has the good old cable actuated throttle, baby. You love to see it. It just feels so good, so fresh. Um, the other thing I noticed on here as well is the 765 Daytona has the uh, carbon fiber chain guard right here. That's a really nice touch. It's just a little farkle, you know, but it looks really cool. Um, and yeah, you know, it's really interesting because they increased the displacement on this motorcycle uh, damn near 100 cubes, but um, it doesn't really feel any bigger. Uh, so that's a neat trick that they played here and that the bike feels basically the same size despite it having more displacement. Sound-wise, there really is no comparison. My race bike has a full Competition Works exhaust system, and then this uh, has the uh, compliant aero exhaust system. So even though it does sound nice and spicy, it's nowhere near as loud as my race bike. Um, the weight, I also feel as well. Obviously, this is a street trim motorcycle, so it has tons of stuff on it that my race bike simply just does not have. Things like lights, mirrors, turn signals, the entire rear assembly of my motorcycle over here for the tail is just a fiberglass piece basically. Um, but they've kind of done that over here as well. There's not a lot right here for this motorcycle besides the tail light. Um, so honestly, if you wanted to just pop out this tail light and just tape it up, you'd basically be good to go to go race with this thing. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff you'd want to do to this to go racing. You'd need a belly pan, you need lever guards, you'd, you'd need a lot to just go and race with this motorcycle. Um, but again, I think it's just too pretty to go race with it, honestly. Like, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable racing a limited edition, you know, Moto2 derived 765 Daytona. I'd much rather schlep around a 675R that's just been beat to crap and is just a tried and true racing platform. Um, yeah, you know what? I think this is going to be a lot of fun comparing and contrasting these two motorcycles. Definitely stay tuned for my first ride and review on this thing. It's going to be a nice long vlog on this bike. I've got tons to say about it. Um, as I've mentioned before, these are literally my favorite sport bike platforms. Um, I am head over heels for the triple cylinder Triumph sport bikes. I think they're some of the best bikes ever made. Um, I love my 675R. It's my favorite bike that I've ever owned. Um, and in this racing configuration that I have it in, it's just even better. To be honest, you know, in looking at the two motorcycles here, one of the things that makes the 675R so special to me is that rear subframe that's red and then the black powder coated frame. I'm not super in love with this silver frame and silver subframe combo here. Um, it doesn't look as special to me, but then again, having everything else be carbon fiber on this bike is pretty sweet. Um, it's really, really cool. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Oh, didn't see you there. Why don't you watch this video right over here while you're at it? Cause this one's over actually. There's nothing left to see, but if you click this one right here, you could keep watching your sweet Papa Yam on video here on the internet, on YouTube. Click the video, do it.